Many thanks for the welcome. Um, hello, everybody. I'm delighted uh, to um, uh, for this telepresence at your uh, at your school um, uh, in that beautiful city. Uh, uh, so uh, let's let's start with um, uh, the following fact. Uh, that uh, uh, there has been, as you all know, there has been an ex extremely exciting trailblazing progress in AI. Uh, I have uh, been living the uh, the path of AI for the past fifty years, and. Uh, I'll, I'll be frank. I'll never, I never, I had never expected uh, this progress, this accelerated progress, uh, right now, so fast. Uh, still, uh, it is a fact that uh, artificial intelligence is still far behind brains on several fronts. Uh, groundedness. Uh, that is uh, intelligence. Uh, the quality of intelligence that is uh, based on life experiences, inventiveness and ingenuity. Uh, the truth is that not all people have it, uh, but all people are capable of it. And uh, uh, AI today is not. Continual learning. Uh, uh, LLMs are great, but can you retrain them? To move a robot, to 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 recognize, you know. So so it's it's uh, it's uh, uh, or uh, uh, when uh, when uh, when AlexNet uh, uh, re started recognizing cats, uh, can it be made to recognize also dogs? And then you know, uh, and uh, you know. So once once you solve a problem, you cannot turn around and 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 solve a second problem especially if they're very different from the first uh, and uh, if you can solve a second at the third fourth fifth there is going to be what is called catastrophic forgetting and uh, and uh, you are starting to uh, stop being able to do the first tasks and uh, in fact uh, uh, if anybody is interested uh, in my recent work uh, uh, we have proven uh, uh, rigorous theorems that continual learning is a reality. Um, uh, it is, it is, uh, it is, uh, 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 it is a fact of life uh, for uh, machine learning. Uh, emotional and social intelligence. Okay, two uh, two aspects of intelligence in which humans excel uh, is absent, of course, in in in. Uh, uh, in uh, uh, AI, in machine, in machine intelligence, uh, except in very superficial levels, uh, and of course, energy consumption. Uh, your brain works at sixteen watts. Okay, uh, compare with the training of of of, of uh, uh, ChatGPT. Uh, okay, so these are these are. Uh, uh, these are important aspects of intelligence. And uh, again, uh, today's AI, despite its amazing progress, it's not doing well on them. Uh, by the way, how do I know this fact? Uh, I got it the old fashioned way, the tough cop way, sabachos. Uh, I, uh, I interrogated the AI until it confessed. Okay. This is, uh, this is, uh, uh, I got these five bullets from Chat GPT during my first conversation with it uh, uh, back in December. Uh, okay. Uh, so, given this, here is a crazy idea. Isn't there a possibility that we complement AI to improve along this axis? with uh, an intelligence that is less artificial, that is more brain-like. Uh, and this is what I'm going to tell you about today. Um, and what, 
And and what I mean by that, uh, I mean an intelligence that does not use backpropagation. It works like the brain works. An intelligence that is like our brain. It works like our brain. Uh, and as we say that, we realize the, that this uh, 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 this path is a dead end uh, because we have, you know, if we want to, if we want to create an intelligence that works like the brain works, we have a problem because we have no idea how the brain works. Uh, so the, let's let's uh, let's uh, look at this. Uh, we have here are two amazing books that are sort of you know the foundations of uh, two great fields cognitive neuroscience and experimental neuroscience uh, and uh, they are two amazing works uh, extreme you know they both study the same subject uh, intelligence and still they barely reference each other okay they are separated there is a huge gap uh, between uh, these two fields a gap because of not only just of scale, okay, ten to the ten to the second versus ten to the ten to the eleventh, uh, but uh, also in terms of scientific tradition, in terms of in terms of uh, of of uh, experimental methodology, in terms of subjects of of methodology, okay, rats versus humans, and so on. Okay, so this is. Uh, uh, a, uh, a, a major problem, and and uh, one of the great neuro experimental neuroscientists uh, of our time, uh, my colleague at uh, Columbia, Richard Axel, recently put it in a very uh, uh, graphic way. Uh, uh, he said, "We do not have a logic for the transformation of neural activity into thought." Okay, and he thinks that finding this logic, and it's a surprise that Axel, who is a dedicated uh, uh, empirical empirical philosopher uh, that he uses the word logic, which to my ears means a formal system uh, which is uh, ultimately computational. Um, uh, to, uh, so, and he considers finding this uh, this bridging logic as the most important future direction in, in neuroscience okay and this is what i've been working on for the for the past 10 years and i was uh, delighted when um, uh, axel uh, uh, who got the nobel prize uh, for the uh, about two decades ago for uh, understanding how we smell um uh, uh chose it as uh, the most important uh, research problem in neuroscience. Uh, and this is what I'm going to tell you about. Uh, uh, so what, uh, what kind of computational theory uh, is he after? And uh, here is my approach. Uh, uh, what we want to bridge is the gap between spiky neurons and synapses versus cognitive phenomena. Spiky neurons and synapses, in other words, what happens at a very low level in our brain, not quite the biological level, the, uh, the molecules and, and 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 so on, but but uh, but uh, spiky neurons and synapses. We know pretty well how to bridge the biological level of spiky neurons and synapses, but spiky neurons and synapses versus cognitive phenomena like. Uh, 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 language, intelligence, uh, uh, cognition, and so on. Okay, planning, uh, mathematics, uh, giving talks, everything. Okay, so, so how how do I how do I want to uh, do this? Uh, so, uh, I'm proposing this. Uh, let's make let's create a mathematical model that we have created the mathematical model of the brain, uh, which has uh, two properties. It models reasonably well uh, spiking neurons and synapses. In other words, uh, the theory of spiking neurons and synapses is incredibly complicated, okay? So it's a simplified model that reflects the main, what, what we believe are the, the main tenets of neuroscience, okay? And uh, can simulate cognitive phenomena. So if we have this too, I believe that we have done Axel's work. Okay, so uh, uh, and so let me let me uh, present you Nemo uh, for neural model, 
uh, mathematical model of the brain. So, uh, by the way, not many talks will will you know will will uh, give you will present a mathematical model of the brain these days. Okay, so pay attention. Um, uh, so we start with a finite number of brain areas. Okay, our brain has about. 80, 90 of these, okay, they're called Broadman areas. I mean, uh, uh, we don't necessarily mean this, you know, perhaps a little finer, maybe 200 areas is what we have in mind. Each one of them has uh, N excitatory neurons, okay? For simplicity, they all have the same number of neurons. It's not necessary, it's just, it's just, it's just, uh, just uh, um, a simplification. And uh, think of N like uh, 10 million. Uh, Excitatory neurons are the neurons that spike, and by spiking, make other neurons spike. Uh, all areas are connected by random synapses, what in, what in mathematics co we call GNP. In other words, these N neurons, uh, if you take any two of them, A and B, uh, the, there is a small probability P, think of it as 0.1%, uh, that there's going to be a synapse from A to B. Uh, and independently for all pairs of neurons. Certain pairs of areas are, so this is, these are the, the green arrows, okay? It means that they are currently connected uh, internally by random synapses. And also some pairs of areas are connected uh, by fibers of random connections. In other words, uh, if you take, if you take uh, this area, this area and that area, there is a probability uh, uh, any, any, any neuron in this area and any neuron in that area, there's a probability P of, uh, of B and synapse being there. Now, next, neurons fire in discrete steps. We know that that's unrealistic. This is not happening in the brain. The, the, uh, the neurons fire whenever. But uh, by making discrete steps, we can do our math better and we don't distort the reality, okay? We also simulate along our our model models where neurons don't fire in the discrete steps, and we have very similar behaviors. So how do they fire? So here is a, here is a very you know if you want you know here is the key uh, innovation of this model. At each step, in each area, so in each one of these areas, and at every step. Out of the N neurons, let's say 10 million, only a thousand or 10,000 of them fire K. In other words, the point is this, that all of these areas together with extra in the brain, in our brain, together with these excitatory neurons, they have some inhibitory neurons, okay, which are the, the firefighters of the brain. And basically, when uh, the neurons in the area get very excited, the firefighters tell them, no, no, please uh, keep your calm because uh, we are going to have an, ep uh, an epileptic crisis. Okay. So, um, and as a result, uh, only K, very few new excitatory neurons fire in every area. Let's call it K. All right. And how are these K selected? Very simple. You, you, Look what happened at the previous step. You look for each neuron, how many of its predecessors fired, okay? How many of its presynaptic neurons fired? And you add the synaptic weights of all these neurons, and you choose out of N, the N neurons in the area, the K neurons that have the highest presynaptic input, okay? From the previous step. And these more models, as I told you, inhibition. So this is a very important part of our, of, of our, of our uh, 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 by the way, if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt. Uh, this is a very important part of our model. Perhaps the most important innovative part of our, of our model uh, and what makes it, takes it apart from other models and in my opinion, makes it much, much, much more successful. Um, also, uh, a whole area, there are some other inhibitory neurons whose job is to inhibit and disinhibit the, some areas. And this is how the computation in the brain is controlled. We know that this thing exists in the real brain and we model them uh, as a separate, as you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about that. It's the last uh, component of our model. 
Finally, we have plasticity. What's plasticity? Plasticity is how our brains learn. If two connected neurons fire together, in other words, the presynaptic neuron fires and the next step, the postsynaptic neuron fires, and there's a synapse between them, then the weight of this synapse is increased by, let's say, by 5%. Okay, this is heavy plasticity. Uh, this is the simplest of all forms of plasticity that we have observed in the brain, and this is what we are adapting. Uh, so, and we are keeping our our model not just powerful but simple. Okay, so that's essentially that's the model, and you know, notice that it's based on three concepts: plasticity, randomness, and selection. Okay, and if you think about it, these are the three forces of life. Okay, and 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 our model reflects them, I believe, well. Uh, and typical parameters, I, as I told you, n is uh, maybe a million, ten million. In our experiments, we we pick numbers between the two. Uh, uh, k is about a thousand. Uh, p is one in a thousand, and 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 plasticity, the plasticity increases five percent. Okay, that's almost. All, all the whole model, okay? There is one one, one important part that, that I'm going to tell you next. Uh, any questions? Uh, now, once I told you all this, notice that this defines a dynamical system. Uh, the state are the neurons that spike at this, at this moment, uh, that spiked in the previous step, synaptic weights, because every edge has a synaptic weight, starts at one, let's say, and gets increased every time uh, uh, the neurons fire together. And the inhibited areas, the, that detail that I have not told you yet. And the next step function now is fully defined. And so it defines a dynamical system. Uh, in other words, if you start, and if you, I guess, you start by, by firing some, um, uh, 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 some stimuli, at some input area, uh, some uh, visual stimuli or auditory stimuli, uh, then the brain starts working and you know exactly how the how the whole brain is going to work, okay? Uh, is fully defined. Uh, uh, of course, it's very highly random, okay? It's not deterministic, it's highly randomized. And the underlying probabilistic event that makes it random is the creation of this random graph, the creation of the connectome, okay? This is the randomness that uh, is uh, important for the for the workings of the system okay the next function is fully defined and by the way you can play you can you can uh, my student daniel mitropolsky uh, has the simulator on his github and you can play with it uh, what is uh, what is uh, nice about the simulation to start it you have to type uh, load brain which is a good thing to to do uh, first thing in the morning. Okay, it's uh, it's an interesting experience. Uh, now, if you let this uh, here is here is the most interesting part about this model. Uh, it's uh, if you let this model this this uh, this uh, uh, the simulation go. You know, as I told you, prompted by some external stimuli, but then you let it go as it goes. What emerges is a phenomenon that we call assemblies of neurons. That's a very, that's a, that's a well-known fact. Uh, that's a well-known uh, aspect of the brain that has been studied a lot. In other words, representations are created and copied and changed and copied again uh, uh, in various uh, in various uh, parts of the brain. Okay, so uh, what's an assembly? Uh, an assembly is a large and densely interconnected set. In other words, you remember, in any brain area, uh, 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 there is a, there is a, any two neurons have a chance of being connected. In if in a brain area there is an assembly, in other words, uh, a thousand of its million neurons uh, form an assembly, then two neurons in this assembly are going to be two, three, four, ten times more probable to be connected than the ambient environment, okay? These are large and de densely large, 10,000, 10,000 10, neurons, a set of excitatory neurons in the brain area, 
whose near simultaneous fire firing is tantamount to the subject's thinking of a particular memory, concept, person, name, word, episode. In other words, it is a representation of uh, the thinking that the brain is doing at that moment, okay? And assemblies are called the alphabet of the brain. Busaki, Busaki is, is, is a very famous uh, uh, neuroscientist, another very famous neuroscientist, and he's the, he's the guy who discovered assemblies, okay? I mean, Hebb had already predicted them uh, 50 years before, 55 years before, but it was Busaki's group that finally were able to find them in the brain because the technology had, had advanced uh, in these 54 years uh, uh, far enough. Okay, uh, so, uh, and in fact, uh, the assembly have some very interesting behaviors. Projection, reciprocal projection, association, pattern completion, merge, sequence recall, few short learning of classification tasks, okay? So, so but assemblies do the brain's work as Busaki had predicted, okay? They're the alphabet of the brain. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, there is, you know, there is a growing consensus in neuroscience that it is assemblies in our brain that do the heavy lifting in our, of our cognition and intelligence. Okay, and uh, and uh, in fact, we have we we have these algebraic operations, almost algebraic operations that assemblies do, and create something that we call the assembly calculus. Okay, which is a Turing complete language that uh, uh, seems to be, we believe, is what how the brain operates. All right. So, um, so I'm not going to explain all of these. Uh, I'll just, I'll just uh, talk about projection a little. I, I will animate it for you. Imagine that on the on the left we have a f already formed assembly. In the beginning, such an assembly could be a stimulus. In other words, the image of a dog, the, the representation of an image of a dog that your visual system has captured. And now, somehow, you must, you know, your brain decided that this dog must be remembered. And here is how uh, here is how this is done. Uh, uh, this image fires, and because there is a red, the red arrow, that means that there are synapses going to the right. Uh, a lot of uh, synaptic current will, will fall will, will will flow to the right, and a new assembly will be formed to the right. A new a new set of neurons will will be formed, uh, as our model requires. K neurons. Uh, K winners take all uh, will uh, will start spiking. Okay, who are they? They are the ones that happen, the lucky ones that happen to get the most of this uh, of this influx. If if you are if you are mathematically minded, you realize that what happens now is a Gaussian distribution of total influx. Okay, because a lot of things are added. And uh, and now we are we are getting the tail of this distribution, okay? And and this is going to be a set of neurons. Let's 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 present it like that, okay? And by the way, I I make them circles, but I mean, no, they're not they're not supposed to be uh, topologically uh, ge geometrically together, okay? So now, uh, when now the interesting part starts. Uh, this is this is a set of neurons. Now this this thing will fire again, and the blue thing will fire. Of course, has just fired, and as a result, the situation has changed. There is uh, there is uh, still uh, synaptic current coming from uh, from uh, left to right, and now it's a little stronger because the plasticity has happened, and and many of these uh, many of these uh, uh, synapses have increased their their weight. But also the blue thing has uh, has uh, the, the the blue set has uh, fire, and as a result there is recurrent. Uh, it you know the right area receives uh, input from the root blue uh, uh, set, and as a result the winners the K winners will be a little different now. Okay, let's say the red set. Well, this happens again, and uh, the situation changes a little, and so it will move again. And it will move less and less. And basically, the amazing behavior is this: that with very high probability, when I say by with very high probability, it's so high that we have never seen it in simulations out of the trillions of, of, of synapses we have created. We have not seen one fail. Okay, uh, and and uh, uh, of assemblies we have created, and a stable assembly will form. Okay, and this will be the copy of the assembly on the left 
in the area on the right. And every time, now every time that the assembly, the gray assembly fires, the the uh, the green assembly will also fire. And most importantly, the green assembly from now on has a life of its own and it can copy it and can project, copy itself in other assemblies and do other other interesting stuff. Um, and this is, I believe, this is how intelligent uh, intelligence happens in our brain. So, and here is a point uh, that uh, that. Um, uh, our team, me and my colleagues, we have uh, we have proved uh, mathematically uh, that uh, these behaviors function as specified with high probability. Okay, well, as I told you, the high probability means that uh, the probability underlying probability event is the creation of the genome of the of the connectome, uh, and also not only we know that they happen with high probability, but we have verified by extensive simulations. Okay, <clears throat> uh, I promised to explain to you one last detail of the model. Uh, I told you that uh, that uh, areas are inhibited or uh, can be inhibited and disinhibited. How does this happen? And this is, happens by long range interneurons. Okay, there are population of neurons with long axons. By this we mean these are these are inhibitory neurons. These are the gray, gray areas here. They take input. They have the little red arrows. They take input from adjacent areas, and they their output is inhibitory, and they can inhibit either areas. So this is how areas inhibited, or they can inhibit other inhibitors, which disinhibits areas. Okay, so so these areas must be inhibited and disinhibited because these are the controls of the of the of the algorithm that uh, that the brain is executed at this point. And these are the mechanisms. These are this is the mechanism by which they are they are uh, the the inhibition disinhibition of whole areas happens, and uh, they can inhibit remote brain areas or other long range interneurons populations. They can be recruited by assemblies in an area. This is the red arrows. Uh, LRI seem to be necessary for brain computation. This is this is there is a paper that says that without LRI there is no brain computation. With LRI there can be great brain computation, and they constitute the program of the computation. Okay, uh, you know this is a hardware language, and this is the program. Okay, uh, hardware programming language. This is the program. Okay, now assemblies plus LRIs give you universal computation. Okay. It's it's a hardware language that can do arbitrary computations on square root of n over k bits. Okay, uh, and square root over over k is a is a couple of is a few dozen. And if you think about it, uh, uh, a few dozen bit computation means computation by a Boolean circuit that has depth a few dozen uh, steps. And this is an amazingly powerful computation. Okay, so uh, I don't think anybody in this, in this room is capable of such computation. So this is a fine explanation of why our brain can do so many things. Okay, a theoretical sort of you know uh, uh, abstract explanation. Um, here's my point. Okay, this you know we have proven we have had a wonderful time in the last ten years proving interesting theorems. Uh, uh, on about Nemo, but I mean, you know, the main purpose of Nemo is uh, to be to be simulated, okay, and through it to simulate cognitive phenomena. And uh, so it is software implemented neuromorphic computation. Uh, so uh, you know about neur neuromorphic computation. It's the cra new craze. You know that there has been there has been a lot of progress in the past ten years. Uh, uh, there is uh, there are many many uh, academic uh, projects, uh, several industrial projects, uh, Intel, Loihi, for example, and so on. Uh, ours is uh, is software implemented, okay? It, it, because it's a mathematical model, and to simulate these steps of the model, uh, if you are if you are good at the analysis of algorithms and you do some back over there level of calculation, you see that you need that much computer time, where t is the number is the number of steps it does and think of it as the number of seconds times 50 okay because it takes 20 milliseconds uh, for uh, for uh, for uh, things to fire and and, uh, and the, the next firing to happen okay so um 
okay, this will be a disaster, okay? Because remember, N is between a million and 10 million. So, so we would, be, would never be able to um, uh, simulate this on any GPT. But we have a clever, if I may say so, lazy simulation technique that reduces this to uh, uh, P, K square, T square. And it's a, it's a 10,000 speed duck, which allows us to simulate a few seconds of brain time on a laptop, okay? And this is, this is what I'm going to show you. Uh, and it, it's enough for some cool cognitive phenomena. Okay, so this, this is where I'm going now. Uh, in other words, recover our plan. I explained to you what NEMO is and why we believe that it models reasonably well spike in neurons and synapses. Now I'm going to tell you why it implement, how it implements cognitive phenomena. For example, uh, two years ago in AAAI <coughs> conference, we uh, showed that Nemo can solve this problem. Okay, uh, what's this problem? That uh, that uh, uh, you see a set of imagine five stacks of blocks in a in a in a in a, in a, in a toddler's playroom. Um, then imagine another way of stacking the same number of blocks. So. <laughs> and you want to transform the current set of stacks of blocks to the target set of stacks of blocks, okay? And Nemo can do it, okay? So uh, uh, you want the output to be a robotic program that tell you exactly what to do to in order in order to transform this stack into the imagined stack, okay? And uh, Nemo can do it, but I'm not going to bother you with the details of this because I have something much more interesting to tell you uh, i'm going to tell you about language okay um uh, uh, i'm going to tell you uh that you know that a year a year and a half ago we implemented a parser of english which is implemented by spike in neurons okay so you know uh, i want you to take a few seconds and think about it okay we are going i'm going to describe to you a parser uh, which is not written in a programming language that has uh, loops and if then else. It is through simulated rea realistic neurons. Okay, uh, it's exclusively implemented through the spiking of neurons. Okay, like your parser. Okay, <laughs> in your brain, <laughs> like your parser that is working like now with my sentences. Okay, so. And of course, we are, go we are going to uh, uh, talk about 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 how language is done in the brain uh, and so on. So you know, so and and on the left you have you have uh, you have what we know today about about you know uh, you know the, the basic the very basic things that that we know today. I mean, we know many many more, but. We know the, the basic structure is this, okay? That, that, that there is Broca's area, there is Wernicke's area, there is the lexicon, um, and they're connected by fibers. These are the arrows. And, uh, and uh, 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 it, you know, it's a great mystery exactly how this happens, okay? And our work, uh, part of its purpose is to, shed some light to this mystery okay to to add uh, a simulation tool to this mystery um and i mean why choose language i mean why why not insist on on smaller things i mean language you realize is the is the is the hardest thing that any brain has done okay i mean what what is happening in your brain right now is incredibly uh complicated and and you know uh, you know when i say incredibly i mean it literally okay that is very hard to believe that what is hap what is happening now which is that i'm creating uh, air waves in your space and your tympanum takes these air waves and makes them into uh, words and creates hierarchies out of these words and uh, then comprehends these hierarchies, uh, uh, understands what, what they mean. And if I'm very lucky, we'll remember these hierarchies for the rest of your life, okay? Uh, so, uh, so this is an incredibly difficult and still very mysterious uh, function. And, and, and uh, 
together with uh, with uh, with uh, testing the the capabilities of our of our simulator of of our of our model, we also want to shed light to the mystery of language. Okay, so so let me let me. Uh, let me show you the architecture of the parser. I mean, and this architecture is is uh, is supposed to reflect what uh, what I showed you before. Uh, you know, uh, in other words, in our work on language, uh, which will be the rest of my talk, uh, we are going to uh, adhere to um, uh, to the consensus of neurolinguists who have been studying this for for 150 years. Um, uh, of how our brain makes language and have made substantial progress, but are still incredibly, very, 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 very far from from understanding how this happens. And uh, my hope is that our 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 work will will uh, be a uh, progress breakthrough in this direction. Uh, so uh, we are going to uh, uh, take into account any consensus that uh, that exists in the neurolinguistics community wherever this whenever this consensus exists okay so so here is uh, here is uh, the basic architecture um, <clears throat> there is going to be a, a particular area uh, called lexicon uh, on the on the right um, and then there are going to be uh, several areas the green areas uh, uh, labeled by parts of speech and and, and syntactic roles verb subject adjective preposition object um, pre pre prepositional phrase i guess uh, an object um, and uh, in the there are fibers that connect them and in fact between the purple and the green areas we know that there exists evolutionarily new fibers that didn't exist in the in the in the in the uh, in the chimp in the chimpanzee uh, that that uh, probably are employed in language uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, in the lexicon uh, uh, this adult speaker has already learned and imprinted as assemblies uh, uh, words okay like uh, you know the words in the sentence a dog chased a cat okay uh, uh, and uh, you know your your brain contains a lexicon uh, a lexicon area a purple area that has uh, several tens of thousands of words okay the more the more languages you speak the more so uh, so here so here we assume that this is already there so that's where we start and basically uh, our, our our gamble is can we make uh, the parsing process work through uh, uh, Nemo? Okay, I mean that that's that's that, that's that, that's our gamble, and uh, uh, here's how it goes: uh, the input is a sequence of excitations of word assemblies. In other words, instead of you know, we could it be we could have been using Siri for this, okay? But 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 it would be like cheating, okay? It would be like a stunt. Uh, we assume that the input is excitations of a dog chased a cat. Okay, you know it's a sequence of these of these of these five words uh, that uh, that uh, give the input to the parser. All right. Uh, in other words, we assume that phonology has been solved. Okay, we don't want to deal with that because it's a it's a whole different it's a whole other uh, 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 bag of tricks. Uh, completely different, completely disjoint from from, from our focus. Uh, so each word assembly, each one of these of these assemblies here, is not by itself. Okay, it has an action set, and the action set is in, implemented by LRIs. They are inhibit disinhibit actions that are implemented by LRIs. In other words, this word has already uh, recruited an LRI. For example, all nouns have recruited the same LRI, or transitive verbs have recruited the same LRI, and so on. Uh, uh, long ago, when when this adult was learning uh, English, okay, um, <clears throat> and and uh, and uh, it encodes the part of speech, the syntactic role of this of this uh, of this uh, word. And where, when a word assembly size fires, its action chest is executed. Okay, so you know these uh, these uh, uh, inhibit disinhibit commands uh, are these LRIs fire. Um, 
The sum total of the word action set is the grammar. Okay, I don't have a better better word for this. Uh, you know, this is how the definition of the lang of, of the underlying language of English in this case, the grammar of the, the grammar of English. It is it is uh, the sum total of this ac word action set. So, what happens if we input cats chase dogs in this in this in this? Uh, let, let's watch. First of all, the the simulation starts with uh, with uh, the fiber that goes from legs to subject uh, in disinhibited okay everything else is inhibited why because the language is english and we know that the subject will come first if that's if the if the if the sub if the language was uh, irish okay or 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 filipino uh, uh there will be something else would happen okay and and or russian uh uh, so, uh, but I mean, it's English, so, so we start this way. Uh, cats uh, uh, fires, and because the, this uh, this uh, this uh, uh, fiber is open, uh, uh, it will be projected uh, to the subject area. And of course, uh, the action set now says uh, this in inhibit inhibit that fiber; it's not yet anymore, and the fi fi the the fire is. The, the fiber is black again then chase comes and uh, its action set inhibit these two fibers uh, uh, and of course it's it's projected and because uh, chase is a transitive verb it knows that it's it's grammar it's it's action set knows that there's going to be an object and therefore it uh, it disinhibits also the fiber from verb to object uh, then dogs comes it's projected and now the passing is complete okay uh, okay that's a fair question but i tell you that the parsing is complete how do we how do i know how do i experimentally verify that this parsing has that this sentence has been cor correctly sparsed and after the input cat chase dogs high synaptic weights form a valid dependency tree okay in other words we can recover through nemo uh, uh, high synaptic weights you know the highest synaptic weights and the between these areas and they are going to form a valid dependency tree which as many of you know is the way nlp folks uh, uh, treat language uh, the last few years the few decades uh, okay and now it's ready to parse again and the next sentence all right uh okay we also uh you know for those if, if there are any linguists any chomsky and linguists uh, in the audience we also uh, compute a valid basic parse tree uh, okay i want you to remind you that this program is you know has no if then else no loops okay no uh, no data structures no variables all right i mean it's implemented exclusively through the star spikes of neurons we use about uh, uh, 10 million neurons and trillions of synapses okay and if you think about it uh, this is more powerful than intel's low he too than, than the, the most advanced uh, uh, neuromorphic uh, chip of intel uh, and uh, and uh, it parses simple sentences such as this the young couple in the next house saw the old white car of the main suspect quite clearly uh, it will parse this sentence its speed is about uh, uh, as fast as i'm speaking right now if you translate it into brain time um, and uh, as fast as your brain is parsing what i'm saying now i mean uh, if you translate it to brain time we also have implemented uh, a, a russian parser and uh, and uh, friends around the, uh, others around the world have implemented Japanese, Hungarian, Mandarin. Um, uh, we published our paper in Tagle last year, and the code is available online. Uh, okay, so here is uh, here is uh, some criticism that uh, that we heard about 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 um, uh, our parser, but now we have miraculous parsers okay your parser is nothing compared to them yes okay but you are missing the point uh, this is biologically plausible does not use backpropagation it's implemented 
only through neurons. Okay? There is no other parcel like that. It's the first of its kind. It's a first step. We believe in a long and very fruitful path. And most importantly, when people, you know, when we ourselves or others uh, point out uh, uh, deficiency of the parcel, for example, it does not have recursion, it does not, it does not, uh, you know, many, many. We work a little and we implement them. So we see no fundamental new limits to how good it can become. Okay. And, 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 you know, in other words, we don't see it as a limited parser. Right? We know we have played with it enough to know that it has no obvious limitations. Okay. So we are looking forward to finding the limitations. Uh, uh, so how are you going to test your theory in humans? We have been asked this. Okay. Uh, we will not. It's not a theory. It's a proof of concept. Okay. Uh, we, uh, we make the point that parsing in the brain can be done without divine intervention. Okay. Frankly, because before I, I implemented this parser, I was not so sure. Okay. I mean, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, can neurons parse? Give me a break. Uh, okay. Let's go back. Okay. So, you know, Look at this, okay? Look at the architecture. I've assumed that the architecture is already in place, okay? That you have that you have uh, uh, the legs, you have the words, you have their action sets, you have the labels of you know when a baby is born, it has none of this, okay? So the whole so uh, how does this complicated mechanism come about? I mean, the baby the baby is born with a tabula rasa, with a blank brain. How does this complicate? Okay, and that's an important question, and that's what I'm going to talk about next. The hard job is filling the blanks, labeling these areas, and and imprinting uh, the representations of of uh, of um, uh, the words in the lexicon. Okay, together with with the action sets. Okay. Uh, and how about semantics and generation? Okay, so if you if they ask you, if they ask me, is this the neural basis of language? I would say no, not quite. The neural base of language would be this, but minus the labels, minus the imprinted the already ready words, plus hardware for semantics. In other words, not only to parse but to comprehend. Uh, the sentence that is being said, in other words, to understand its meaning, what it means. And generation, uh, when you see a cat chasing a dog, you should be able to say a cat is chasing the dog. Okay? And, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, so generation is, of course, uh, so plus very important, most important, most difficult, the ability to learn all these things from nothing, starting from nothing, start starting from just brain hardware. Okay? So this is the journey that I'm going to take you next. Uh, biologically plausible la language acquisition. Um, if you look at uh, the archive, uh, the last uh, paper that I have posted, is a paper of my student Mitropolsky, where we explain how we do this uh, this uh, this uh, thing, which, uh, to my mind, is the most surprising and fun thing that I've ever done. Okay, in research, uh, we have created an artificial baby brain, which is a tabula rasa. In other words, nothing is programmed into it. All right, nothing is imprinted into it. It's completely blank, okay? A blank neural device with a couple of dozen areas and populations of LRIs, okay? So sort of the simulated by NEMO, of course. Uh, the input is a modest amount of grounded shared attention natural language, okay? These are these are things that that define that that, that require definition. Natural language, you know what it is. What is grounded? Grounded means, as I told you, means uh, 
rooted in the world. Okay. Uh, in other words, the, this 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 sentence that is being told a, 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 a baby should be grounded in what happens uh, right now. In other words, the, there is a tutor and there is a pupil, and the tutor and the people have shared attention. They're looking at the same thing, and the same thing they're looking at is a cat chasing a dog. And the tutor says that the, the cat chases the dog. Okay, and uh, and uh, so this is the uh, the training, the input. Okay, so this is of our of our experiment. Okay, we're, we're doing an experiment. Okay, we're we're creating uh, a baby who can speak. All right, uh, starting from a baby that knows nothing. Okay, and uh, we are going to have such sentences input, and the modest amount. What does modest amount? I mean, as as many of you know, Chomsky. Uh, admires what he calls the poverty of the stimulus. In other words, that 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 language that language uh, uh, we learn language with very few, very very few. I mean, of uh, by the by the age of two, a baby has heard a few thousand sentences. Okay, and is able to uh, to create a language with a hundred words. Okay, so you know, and and, and 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 syntax, semantics, everything. Okay, so modest is never defined. In the Chomskyan literature, we define it. Okay, modest we think should mean that what is the lexicon? Uh, modest amount of grounded language is uh, should be a number of sentences which is a small multiple of the lexicon. Okay, not trillions times the lexicon as is the case for uh, for uh, for uh, uh, LLMs. All right, so. Uh, and 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 uh, uh, all right. Uh, and the output should be a mature language organ, complete with a lexicon, a comprehender, which is a parser plus also uh, 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 understanding of the semantics of it is be said, and a generator, the ability to generate sentences. If you see a cat chasing a dog, you should say a cat is chasing a dog. Okay, good. So. Let's let me tell you where we stand. We have implemented the acquisition of a very simple langu language. The main the main limitation is that only transitive verbs. Okay, we cannot we cannot handle a cat is chasing a dog, but we can handle a cat is running. Okay, uh, uh, so only in transitive verbs like run, walk, jump, eat. Okay. Um, we assume that phon phonology has been so solved, and therefore um, uh, there is uh, what what the input is uh, just uh, uh, the excitation of assemblies. All right. Uh, so what we, what we must do is learn the representations of nouns and their semantics, also verbs and their semantics, learning to generate two word sentences. I mean, the the two the first two years of linguistic life and with the baby saying daddy gone okay so you know the first two word sentence okay a, a subject and, and a verb and an interesting verb uh, and this is what we're focusing okay the first two years of language acquisition uh, and of course you have to learn the, the word order of the language okay because you see uh, 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 you know in irish daddy gone would be gone daddy okay because the verb comes first in, in irish uh, and we are we are looking at the hard case to learn language from overheard language still grounded with shared attention uh, when you are thinking about language acquisition today we are thinking of a dedicated parent uh, uh, showing the baby kitty doggy runs okay so you know and this is uh, very extremely helpful i mean an actual experiment show that it's very helpful but to learn to do learn to implement language acquisition in our mind means that we should be able to that the baby should be able to learn language <coughs> even though even if in the case where they only hear grounded whole sentences okay uh, doggy runs cat eats uh, uh, deer jumps okay you know so uh, 
Um, so uh, still, of course, grounded with shared attention. And why is this a hard case? As I said, because the baby does not know if the language is subject first or verb first, okay? So when it hears cat jumps, okay, uh, it's not clear if cat is the verb or the noun. Cannot be clear to it, to the baby. Uh, and therefore must figure this out first, okay? Must figure the, the word order first. Is this clear? Because uh, Swahili and Irish kids, uh, Swahili speaking and Irish kids, they have the same brain as the English speaking kid, okay? All right, so how do we represent nouns in their semantics, okay? Let's take dog. Uh, it is a symbol in the lex for nouns. There is a particular uh, lexical area for nouns. And this, this uh, you know, linguists, uh, neurolinguists agree. There is a phonetic area where the way of pronouncing and, 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 and understanding the phonetics of dogs is encoded as, 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 uh, as uh, programs. Uh, and this, again, there is a, a ample evidence that this exists. And, and the symbol is very uh, firmly rooted in the, the phonetic representation through very strong uh, uh, synaptic connections. And how are the semantics of the, of the, of the dog represented? Well, by a star of assemblies, okay? That the, most main, the main assembly is a visual representation of the, context, of the, of the concept of dog, okay? That, that happens in the, our vision system. I mean, so let's, let, let me, let me, uh, let me explain one thing that what I promised you that the input would be grounded language. Okay. This is dangerous because grounded means rooted in the world. And this means that I will have to define the world. Okay. The way I avoid this is by, is by uh, taking as the surrogate of the world, the motor vision and a bunch of other, uh, 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 uh sensory motor areas. Uh, or near the you know the uh, the boundary between sensory motor and language, which we know from experiments that that's where the semantics, the meaning of the words are stored. Okay, are are represented. So uh, a dog has a visual, a visual, very strong visual semantics. It has somewhat very weaker, much weaker motor semantics. May may know how dogs walk, how dogs run, how dogs jump. Uh, and then all, maybe olfactory, you know, the, you know, we have about 20, 20 semantic areas uh, in our simulation. Uh, there is, of course, the, the uh, uh, emotional uh, area, okay? you know, you may love dogs, you may be afraid of dogs, and so on. So this is how a noun is represented. And a verb is represented by in the same way. Phonetics... Uh, it's now it's firmly rooted into both phonetics and the motor area, uh, which is sort of you know the the motor the motor program for crawling, um, and uh, several, uh, I may love crawling, crawling and so on, may see things while crawling, crawling and all that. Uh, so this is this is uh, 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 the semantics of, of verbs. Uh, so this is this is not our idea. Uh, it implements the widely accepted hub and spoke semantic theory in neurolinguistics. So neurolinguists had many ideas about this and had confirmed these ideas by experiments, but they had never imagined that uh, this can be simulated by neurons. Okay, and that's what we are doing. Each word representation is a star of assemblies. And the assemblies of the star, their size and overlap, the strengths of their synaptic connections to the symbol are all dynamic, okay? These things change, okay? These things change all the time and encode the meaning of this word for this speaker at this moment. And they reflect, uh, you know, these, these, uh, these, uh, 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 these uh, parameters reflect coherence of words, statistical regularities, order statistics, and changing world contexts, okay? So, so we have made our, our simulator to be very dynamic, okay? To, to, to bring in and reflect uh, new world contexts. And it, it also supports multilinguality. You can learn more than one language here. Uh, okay, so 
uh, I'm running out of time, so I'm going. I'm going to um, uh, uh, jump to my conclusions. We have just begun. Uh, we have yet to perceive fundamental limits. In other words, we are now implementing objects. You know, complete sentences. Uh, and uh, I mean, you know, it's hard work, but it's work, and and it will succeed. Um, our goal is to create, in the context of language, brain line hardware that can support various modes of learning. Okay. I mean, this is our ultimate goal. Uh, uh, AI today learns through back, back propagation. The brain does not. Okay. What are the modes of learning of the brain? One shot and few shot learning. Okay. You know what this is. Plus assimilating experienced statistical regularities and patterns. Okay. This is something that 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 we want to achieve uh, through this uh, through this uh, set of experiments. And all through heavy amplasticity, because there is nothing else happening in the brain. Okay, there is no back propagation in the brain. Only heavy amplasticity. This is the only way that the brain can learn. All right. So uh, the study of the brain is the hardest and most exciting thing I have done in my career. Uh, the same for language. Uh, it's 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 you know I find it almost funny how running a stupid experiment enables you to ask questions that people thought have do not have the right to ask before like what is the neural basis of language uh, and pro we have made substantial progress on a continuing biologically plausible language acquisition uh, big question is nemo what axel is after second big question is the design of neuromorphic intelligence systems such as the baby brain we are uh, we're creating now a useful complementary path to artificial intelligence? Uh, my collaborators, uh, uh, Santos Vempala, Georgia Tech, Mark Debaje, his student, Mike Collins, my former colleague at Columbia, now at Google, Dami Tropolsky, uh, my student at Columbia, uh, the creator of all this, and, and um, a graduate student who's going to be in the market um, this year. Thank you very much.